Hey, good morning. Welcome back. We're in the Gospel of Luke. Now we're moving over into chapter 2, and we're going to take the first seven verses. Let's read them. And it came to pass in those days that a decree went out from Caesar Augustus that all the world should be registered. This census first took place while Quirinius was governing Syria, so all went to be registered, everyone to his own city. Joseph also went up from Galilee out of the city of Nazareth into Judea to the city of David, which is called Bethlehem, because he was of the house and lineage of David, to be registered with Mary, his betrothed wife, who was with child. So it was that while they were there, the days were completed for her to be delivered, and she brought forth her firstborn son and wrapped him in swaddling clothes and laid him in a manger because there was no room for them in the inn. So this is the birth of the Messiah. <laughs> Sorry, there's no rooms available. You'll just have to uh, be out in the chicken coop, you know, that kind of thing. Uh, interesting here, you know, when you compare Christianity to, to other religions, for example, the other Abrahamic religions, Islam and uh, Judaism, uh, it is Christianity that is especially rooted in history. Uh, Judaism somewhat, but really I would say Christianity, very much rooted in history because you have uh, Luke 2, verse 1 and 2 and 3, this, we can place this time, this time frame, we can place the year and the governors because certain people were governors at certain time. We have a record of those things. So Christianity is firmly rooted into history. And so God knew that would be a, a perilous thing to do, but he did it. And Christianity is, uh, is very much attached to history. So this makes it a very distinct thing, the way we have it. It puts, sort of puts God to the test, and I think he passes the test quite well. That's not our purpose today to plow into all that, but you can look up uh, the things about the dating for this. But this is very interesting. This glues, glues the time of Christ into history. Very interesting that God would do that. Very intentional, by the way, as well on his part. Uh, here we have uh, the baby Jesus born. He's brought forth. He's going to be in a little uh, cattle stall type situation. A very humble beginning for the king of the universe come in humanity. So friends, uh, very interesting that God would do it that way. I think rather intentional. Uh, very interesting too how he's not going to be a famous child, you know, of a rich family. The offerings, especially for the poorest, those are the ones they're going to use here coming up. And so Jesus is born right here. And he doesn't come glowing and coming in from the sky and just as a humble child of a foretaste of what's going to come in the ministry of Jesus. God is working. Let's pray. Dear Father in heaven, thank you for sending Jesus. He is God come in human flesh. The Bible testifies to this. We agree with the scriptures. And so, Lord, we thank you for sending Jesus as God come in human flesh. We're glad that you have taken this step to so identify humanity with divinity. We, uh, we want to simply cooperate with you and do what you say. We want to be in submission to you and find your pathway. So now, Lord, bless us and help us to see the humility of Jesus and help us to copy that ourselves as we're going to see him grow and continue that humility. Bless, we pray in Jesus' name we ask. Amen. So, friends. May you be blessed today because God was willing to send, send his son in the perilous form of a small child, helpless child, into the caretaking of Joseph and Mary, human parents, to take care of him very much in God's way of doing things. God bless you today.